Now in this video we're going to look at the graph of our sine function and I'm going to start with using our calculator and then we can go about explaining how we came up with the values if we wanted to calculate this by hand. Uh, now first of all if we go into the mode uh, we could be in degree mode if our angle is in degrees but most of the time here with the graphing we're going to be using radians so you want to make sure that your calculator is in radian mode otherwise the graph is not going to uh, come up right on the screen so if we're using radians you need to make sure the calculator is in radian mode so if we go to y equals then if we have our function I'm just going to look at the basic sine function as y equals the sine and a lot of times here when we're graphing instead of using our Greek letter theta uh, we will actually look at using y equals the sine of x so x now is representing our angle so on the calculator we would type in the sine of x and up here is your variable key and just to be safe here we're going to close the parentheses here on uh, our sine function and we can simply hit graph and depends on what your window is set up uh, I'm just going to hit the graph and see what happens uh, we do see part of the graph here normally what I suggest is because we're graphing a trig function if we go in uh, zoom you notice here at number seven there's actually a zoom trig this Z trig number seven will kind of fit this to zoom in based on your trig function and what we will notice if you go into the window uh, your X minimum and X max we're going from a negative six to a positive six uh, roughly and essentially what the calculator is doing at this point is if you look at the uh, sorry if you look at the graph that tells us here that our x-axis is going from basically a negative 2 pi to a positive 2 pi okay and if we go back into the window you can notice the y minimum and y max we're going from a negative 4 to a positive 4 so if I go to the graph here this is a pretty good description so I'm going to copy this and if I paste that here and what we're seeing here with this particular graph you will notice that it's starting if we start over here at the far left it goes up down and back and then at this point it starts to repeat or if we start at the origin the graph will start it goes up down and then once we get to the end here to the far right the graph is going to continue to repeat like this going up and down and this is what we call kind of an uh, oscillating function because it's going up and down or a periodic function because uh, that what that means is after a certain amount of time a certain amount of period the graph is going to continue to repeat itself so if we look at this in terms of uh, trying to look at the graph if we were thinking of doing this by hand we could make our XY chart just like you've always done and let me label uh, this here we know we're going all the way down to negative 4 up to positive 4 and this is 0 and we're going all the way out here to 2 pi and from the calculator if we go into the window notice the scale is this decimal of 1.57 and basically what that decimal is is the scale is actually power over 2 so this would be power over 2 and then if we add another power over 2 we would have whoops after power over 2 we would actually get pi and then if we add another we would get at this point would be 3 power over 2 and then 4 power over 2 which would be 2 pi so if we think of this in terms of our unit circle basically what we're doing is we're starting here at 0 we have pi over 2 at the top pi over here 3 pi over 2 at the bottom and then we're all the way back to 2 pi and notice this basically one trip around the circle is this part of the graph and then if we were to continue around the circle again we would continue with the graph and of course if we went negative that's where we're getting the left hand side of this graph so we'll notice here if we were to pick uh, 
these four points as we go around the circle here, or five points, if we started with letting x equal zero, that means we would take the sine of zero. Well, the corresponding points here would be zero, one. At the top here we have, whoops, I'm sorry, one zero, x is one, y is zero. And then here at the top, it would be zero, one. And this particular point, the x and y coordinate is negative one, zero. The bottom of the circle, we would have zero, negative one, and two pi's back to one, zero. So if x is zero, then the sine of x, now the, or the sine of zero, I'm sorry, if we plug zero in for x up here, the sine of zero says go to zero, and the y value, in this case our sine function, we're simply looking at the y values here. So we would have a y value of zero, and that's why we have this starting point at the origin, uh, when the sine of zero is actually zero. And if we go up here and plug in uh, pi over two, if x is equal to pi over two, the sine of pi over two, again, is the y value, so therefore we're going to get one. So at pi over two, the graph goes all the way up here to one, and we can continue around. If we go to pi, we would get a y value of zero, so therefore the graph comes back down and touches the x-axis. And then if we look at three pi over two, at three or pi over two, the graph goes down at 3 power over 2 we have a negative 1 and that corresponds to this point on the graph and then if we go all the way back around to 2 pi the sine of 2 pi again is 0 which means we're back up to where we started from on the x-axis and you could continue to go around uh, the circle again and that's why the graph then would continue to repeat itself so there is the basic graph of your sine function and if you notice, the graph only goes up to 1 and down to negative 1. So the largest value we get out is a positive 1. The smallest value we get out is a negative 1. And that's kind of talking about the range. Remember, the range is your y value. So the range here for this graph of just plain sine of x is negative 1 to 1. We can only get out values somewhere between negative 1 and 1. And if you think about that, that is because if we look at the unit circle, what is the largest and smallest y value on the unit circle? Well, here at the bottom, the smallest y value is negative 1 at 3 power over 2. And the largest y value is up at pi over 2, where we have a positive 1. So that's why the graph is oscillating up and down between 1 and negative, uh, between 1 and negative 1. Now realize the domain, okay, so keep in mind here the y, this is our range, but the x is our domain. What can we plug in? We can substitute in any real number, and that's why we can, any number here on the x-axis, we can substitute in. It's just that we're only going to get out y values between negative 1 and positive 1. Now, the other part of the graph I want to kind of focus on here is if we look at uh, the points that we plotted as we went around the circle, we have basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And some textbooks refer to these as kind of your five key points. And that's because here, this is classified, or what I would refer to here as from 0 to power over 2 going up. Uh, this is one step, and then we go down. I call this step two, and then we go down some more. Step three to the negative one, and then we curve back up, and that's step four. So it's kind of like we're dividing this part of the graph into four equal steps. We go up to the high point, the peak. We come back down to the middle. We go down to the low point, and then we go back up to the middle. And I'll explain what I mean by these four steps a little bit later as we explore graphing our sine function. All right, there's two other terms that I want to talk about, and I think I'll come down here and look at another graph so it doesn't get quite so messy looking. So I'm going to bring down, again, this is just the same sine function. Okay, so we're still looking at y equals the sine of x and again we're going from 0 to 2 pi 
So halfway here, this is pi over 2. This point is pi. And this point is 3 pi over 2. Okay. So let's kind of, just want to kind of highlight these five key points that we have here on the graph. Okay. And basically we're looking at going around the unit circle one time. And what this is going to tell us is the graph, if we start here, and we can pick any point, but I'm going to start at this point here at zero, and we go out to 2 pi. This distance is where the graph starts to repeat. And this here is classified as the period. Okay, in other words, the period of this graph is how long does it take for this graph to repeat itself? So once again, if we pick any point, if we start here, we go up, down and then we're back up to where we started from. Well, what is this distance? Well, we can count from this point to this point because we start at zero, it's obviously two pi. Or we could simply take two pi minus zero and the answer is we have a period of two pi. So it takes a distance of two pi for this graph to repeat itself. Now, another way we could calculate the period is we could certainly look at basically going from this low point, this kind of, sometimes they call this a valley. So if we go from valley to valley, so the uh, previous valley would be right here. So if we were to go from uh, one valley to the next consecutive valley, this is also the period. So we're going here from this location, which this would actually be at, because we're going back here one, this is negative pi over two. So if we were to subtract the 3 pi over 2 here, or take 3 pi over 2 rather, minus a negative pi over 2, that would also give us the period. So in this case, the two negatives are adding, and we would get 4 pi over 2, which would be equal to 2 pi. So, I mean, the period, of course, is going to be the same. Now, you could also look at the peak. So if we go from peak to peak, if we went from here to here, we could also calculate the period that way. And basically at that point, we would be looking at uh, this particular location here would be a negative 3 pi over 2. So if we were calculating the period here, we would take the point here, which is pi over 2, and I would subtract away a negative 3 pi over 2, and again, the two negatives, you always want to take the largest number, so the one to the furthest to the right here, minus the left. So therefore, we get pi over 2 minus a negative, so we're going to add, which would give us 4 pi over 2, which is simply, again, equal to 2 pi. So each way here, we could calculate the period. You could either look from peak to peak, valley to valley, or again, we could look for uh, any point that we want to, the first one from 0 to 2 pi, you're just looking at how long does it take for this graph to repeat itself. Okay, the other term that we want to be familiar with is something called the amplitude. So we've talked about the period, and the other one is the amplitude. Okay, and there's two ways to kind of think about this, uh, the way the book defines it. And we're basically looking at what is the highest point and then if we go all the way down here to the lowest point, well, we said this highest point here was at 1, and the lowest point here on the graph would be at negative 1. So the total distance from the highest to the lowest point, in this case, would be 2, because we would have 1 minus a negative 1. So that's 2. And the way the book describes it is we want to take half of that. So half of that uh, is going to be the amplitude. So here, the amplitude is going to be half of 2, which is 1. And another way to think of this, if we view, in this case, the x-axis, this is the axis that the graph is oscillating between. So this is kind of the midway point. So the amplitude is really the distance from say a peak down to the middle. So what is this distance right here? This is also, you could think of this distance as being the amplitude. So we're going from zero to one, or we could say, well, let's go from the midpoint down to the valley. And again, this would also be a distance 
of 1. So the amplitude again is going from the peak down to this uh, midpoint, the midline here, the kind of the axis that the graph is oscillating between, or you could think of as the distance between that and the valley. So the total distance is 2, the amplitude is only looking at half of that. Okay, so you can explore with this, and in the next couple of videos we're going to look at uh, how we can make some changes or what happens if we start adding numbers up here instead of just looking at the sine of x.